working on the traction engine which is similar to a Mini Part 11, making an experimental methylated spirit burner, crudely made but it works well, followed by another steam test to verify it. I measured the original plate that I made and I was going to bolt the units to the plate but I thought that was not a good idea. I bought these online, they were extremely cheap. I've tested them a couple of times and they've been successful. I bought three of them and I'm only going to use two in this project. I intend to use the third one in a Mamod solid fuel burner tray because I think it will work then I'll be able to run a solid fuel Mamod on meths again as all the solid fuels appear to have been banned and the current alcohol fuel gel that's available just doesn't work for me. I tried to use it to run a small brass traction engine but it wasn't hot enough. This is what the underside of the traction engine looks like and the burner support isn't so good. I really don't think the person who built this traction engine made this burner support. I measured the dimensions of the firebox and so I didn't forget them. I wrote them on the underside of the original burner plate that I made. This was quickly bent up using some very thin brass. So now I'm making another one with some slightly thicker brass. The idea was to use this small Clark guillotine that I have, but the metal was too thick for it. It's not a very heavy duty tool and it's only any good for cutting and bending very thin metal. The way to bend this piece is the way I normally do it in the vise using a Thor number one copper and hide faced hammer. Very quickly this Thor hammer beats the piece of metal into submission. Now to bend the other side. I found the copper face was better but it did mark the brass slightly which is unimportant. This after all is an experiment and I will only clean it up once I prove that it's successful. In my scrap box I found some pieces of brass angle that are ideal for this job. They are actually removed from the sides of the sweet pea locomotive that I'm building. I gave the parts a liberal coating of Easy Flow number no. 2 flux and I put the silver solder in far too early and it just sat there as a blob because the blowtorch head is not big enough. Very quickly before the part cooled, I changed the blowtorch head for the next size up, and this is really hot. These pieces of silver solder are far too short, which puts my hands too near the flame. I can stand quite a lot of temperature, but not this much. In the end, I held the silver solder stick in a pair of pliers. Before anybody writes in, this is just an experiment. I am capable of much better work, but I just wanted to get on with it and see whether or not my idea was going to be successful. After silver soldering the brass angle at one side of the base, I turned my attention to the other side. It's worth mentioning that I shaped the brass angle to fit the curvature of the end of the plates, which it does. Here I'm gently tapping the brass angle into place because it moved with the heat. Then I let the part cool to black and quench it in water. Here I'm applying flux to the other pieces of brass angle that I'm going to silver solder in place. One near the front and one near the rear. I purposely cut the piece of brass angle at the rear slightly short. Why did I do this I can hear you asking. For the answer to that please watch the previous episode where I fill the burners. And not knowing when the burner pads were full a lot of methylated spirit overflowed onto the bench. But here I have a level indicator, which tells me when to stop pouring. The first thing to do was to test the burner on a piece of fire brick on the bench. And so far the design of this burner looks to be quite successful. The flame from the methylated spirit pads is very hot and quite large. I really am thinking that one of these pads should power a Mamod with a solid fuel burner very well. It took quite a while for the flame to die out. So I took the burner tray down to where the traction engine is in the workshop built onto my kitchen and refilled it with meths. Even with my level indicator I still somehow managed to spill some. Far less meths ended up on the bench, quite unlike in the previous episode. I placed the burner tray in position under the firebox and lit the burners. This is only a small traction engine and it's all silver solid including the boiler. So while I'm gently raising steam, I went round the engine and oiled all the moving parts. In no time at all though, the boiler did start to get warm. Not hot, just warm. After a while, the burner needed topping up. The fire only seems to last for about 10 minutes or less. 
to raise steam previously, I refilled the burners four times. With this arrangement, I refilled the burner three times before the steam appeared. I did, however, blow down the water gauge to lower the level of water in the boiler. And very soon, let there be steam. The amount of steam produced with this burner was considerably better than when the two burners were just side by side on a metal plate. I need to make sure the boiler doesn't run low. This is a soft soldered boiler so it certainly would not be a good idea to run the water low. It's safe enough though, it's not coal fired so if the water did run low I'd just remove the burner. Here I've closed the bypass valve so the water has been pumped into the boiler. If the engine is running too fast, the balls in the ball valves bounce about and that's the noise you keep hearing. There are two good things happening here. The water level in the water gauge is rising and the pressure gauge is showing about 15 pounds per square inch. I showed and mentioned in the last episode that I fitted a pipe from the blowdown valve on the water gauge which empties into the water tank and warms it up. So when I'm pumping water into the boiler, there is very little in the way of a pressure drop. It's obvious what I'm doing in this clip, refilling the burner again. That's about it for the narrative, but the steam test continues to the end although it is edited, because otherwise it would be too long and tedious.
And that is it, the end of the steam test. The water's nearly at the top of the glass, which shows how well the water pump works. The fire's gone out and there's no longer any pressure. So that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.